and welcome back to Fun With Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today we're going to review the Addy's Dive MY-50-2 military watch. We're going to answer the question, is this watch fun? And is it worth the $26.55 I paid for it on AliExpress? Well, the answer is yes. It is worth $26.55 and it is a lot of fun. So if that's all you need to know, uh, goodbye. See you in the next video. But if you want to know more about the watch, stick around. Let's start out with the wrist check. I wear my Sterling GMT Pepsi on the vintage leather strap. And Grogu is wearing a Disney watch. I asked Grogu what kind of watch he wanted to wear today. And he wanted to watch to honor his master. And I said, your Jedi master? He said, no, my corporate master. Here is the watch. Oh, I have it upside down. All right, here is the watch. Looks nice. Your basic field watch. Here's the little instruction book. As I, as you saw during the unboxing, you don't really need it. And here is the warranty card. It says Deep Sea Hunter. So I was concerned at first that they named this watch a Deep Sea Hunter, which is a totally inappropriate name for this watch. But then this morning, I just watched a video from the I Like Watches guy, and he unboxed an Andy's Dive uh, Submariner homage, and it had the same warranty card. So I think they just put the Deep Sea Hunter warranty card in every one of their watches. On the Eddie's Dive website, it says this watch has a 10-year warranty. I kind of doubt that. That seems kind of excessive. But you never know. But will Addy's Dive even be around in 10 years? I doubt it. Once again, I paid $26.55 for this watch plus tax. If you wait till tomorrow, this watch will be $0.90 cents cheaper during the big AliExpress sale. Yeah, $0.90 cents isn't a lot of money to save, but the watch is only $26.55 to begin with, so they couldn't discount it that much. The website says the watch is 44 millimeters, but I measured 43. Then it's 50 millimeters lug to lug, 22 millimeter lug width, 13.6 millimeters without the strap, 17 millimeters with the strap, and the website said 117 grams, but I measured 100. So I think maybe they measured it with the metal bracelet on. It has a sign crown that is not a screwing crown. And pretty significant crown guards. It doesn't need to be a screwing crown because this is not a diver watch. And it's only rated for 50 meters. So you're not going to be taking it in the water and worry about the crown popping out. The watch has numbered indexes with a date at the 3 o'clock. And then it has these inner 24-hour markers for doing military time in case you have difficulty adding 12 to your numbers. And then there's the Addy's Dive logo on top here. They didn't have a sterile option, which is fine with me. I never go with the sterile option. I don't want to pretend that my watch isn't what it is. Looking at that Addy's Dive logo, here, let me show you on the case so you can get a better shot. Wow, that looks a lot like the Steel Dive logo, doesn't it? It's almost as if Addy's Dive called up Steel Dive and said, Hey, do you have any uh, spare logos you aren't, aren't using? We need a new logo. And Steel Dive says, Sure, you can use this one. The watch has a Miyota 2115 movement in it, which is your basic Miyota movement, but Miyota is a good brand. And the movement hacks, see? It has a quick set date. And also, I'm glad it has a Miyota movement because as if you saw my uh, review of the American Aviator watch, that was, which had a cheap movement from Singapore, it was really hard to set. But this one is spot on to set. And if you look at the second hand, it hits all the markers perfectly. So that's always nice to see on a quartz watch. The website says it has a Hardlex crystal, which is uh, Seiko's hardened mineral glass now i don't know if it actually has hard lex from seiko or as if if they're using hard lex as a generic term for hardened glass 
My suspicion is it's not actually official hard luck from Seiko, but you never know. The case is not stainless steel. It's some kind of an alloy. The On the website it says an alloy like steel, but it feels good. It doesn't feel like it's going to be easily to scratch or anything, and it feels solid. It has some good heft to it. And it has a stainless steel screw in case back, making battery changes easy. The timing bezel is a 60 click. It has some pretty good bezel action, but it has some serious back play. As you can see, it serious back play. But I'm glad it's a 60 click. 120 clicks is really not necessary. And it lines up just fine. As you can see, the numbers are not painted. They're just engraved into the bezel. And there is no bezel insert. This is The bezel is all just one piece. And it has a very significant loom pip there on top. They have an older model that has white lettering on the bezel uh, but i would avoid that watch for one reason uh, that i will explain later plus i think it looks better with the all black anyway it looks more like a field watch once again this is not a diver i bought the watch on the green nato strap they also have a khaki nato and a black nato and there's also a black bracelet the rule of thumb usually is always buy the bracelet because the bracelet will be have fitted end links. But in this case, the bracelet had f f flat end links, so that wasn't an issue because this watch here is kind of hard to see with the strap on. Let me take the strap off and show you. As you can see, there's no curvature to the watch case between the spring bars. So you don't need a fitted end link on your bracelet. Any flat bracelet will work. And I wanted it on the NATO strap anyway because it just gives it a better field watch look. Not necessarily NATO necessarily, but just the canvas. Here's the shot of the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. Looks nice. It's kind of tall though. The NATO strap really adds some height to this watch, which is already a fairly tall watch to begin with. One complaint about this watch is the NATO strap itself is very hard to take off. One of the big advantages of a NATO strap is it's really easy to change straps. Well, not in this case. The watch has a little lip here that keeps the strap in very tight. So you just can't yank it out. It takes a little effort to pull the strap out where normally a NATO would just fly out of there. And you see the little lips right there. The nice thing about that lip is it holds it on the strap very well. It doesn't go, once you set it where you want it, it doesn't move. But it makes it very difficult to put a new strap on. Let's put it back on the strap and I'll show you. From this direction, it's not that difficult. You can get it in fairly easily. But the difficult part is when you go to thread the other end. That little lip makes it really difficult to push it through. So sometimes you need to get a tool to help get it over this lip. And if you have to get a tool to change a NATO strap, you're taking away a lot of the advantage of the NATO strap. This is kind of hard to do with the camera in front of me. Once again, quite difficult to put the strap, put it back on the strap. 
Here it is on a khaki NATO strap. I think it looks nice with khaki. I don't think you can go wrong with whichever ever strap you pick for this watch. Here's the watch on that vintage leather strap that I had on my sterling earlier. I think the watch looks nice on just about any strap you can think of. The nice thing about a non-NATO strap is it really lowers the height of the watch. So if you don't like a tall watch, you might want to put it on a different strap. Here it is back on a NATO, but this time I only have it with one strap underneath the case back. If you wear it this way, it doesn't sit near as high. And because of that little lip uh, next to the spring bars, the watch ain't going anywhere. So you can wear it this way on a NATO and keep the height a little bit lower. The NATO strap that did come with this watch, though, is very well made. It's very thick canvas. The stitching is good, and the hardware is sturdy, doesn't feel cheap at all. I imagine this strap alone would cost you 10 bucks. And now for the star of the show, the watch is loom. The loom on this watch is really, really good. Let's give it a little charge here. And let's turn off the lights. See, look at that glow. Really nice loom, except for the 12 o'clock. The 12 o'clock, they made it a blue loom rather than the green. And the 12 o'clock loom is just horrible. It fades rather quickly. The only time I ever see the 12 o'clock loom is if I charge it with my flashlight. Uh, but I never see it from just having it charged from normal light. The green loom, on the other hand, is great. I can wake up in the morning and I can still see the watch. Of course, it won't be glowing as bright as this right now. But you can still make out the indices in the hands and the loom pip in the morning. The loom is not painted on. It's in luminous quartz tubes. Kind of like tritium tubes, except for it's not tritium, because it doesn't self-glow. You still have to charge it with light. If you look at the older model of this watch, and look at the loom shots that they give you on the website, all the indices have blue loom with the green at the 12 o'clock. I would avoid that one, because once again, the blue loom is horrible compared to the green. That watch is a couple dollars cheaper. I'd say spend the extra two dollars and get the good loom. So what do I like about this watch? Well, for first thing, the price is right. $26.55, you're getting a solid, good-looking field watch. Once again, you're getting a field watch. This is not a diver. Uh, you can use a timing bezel for other things other than diving. The, it has a great strap, good quality NATO strap on it. The strap alone, I think, like I said, would cost you 10 bucks. And overall, it's just a nice little package. So what are my gripes and groans? Well, first of all, this little lip around the spring bars here makes it really difficult to change your NATO straps. The, one of the big advantages of NATO straps is you can change them without tools. Well, if you have to have a little tool to get the NATO strap over that lip there, then you're changing it with a tool. And the 12 o'clock loom is completely useless. They should have went green for the whole thing. And once again, serious back play on the bezel. But those are minor. And overall, I recommend this watch. As long as you understand this is not a diver. It only has 50 meters of water resistance, which is fine for a field watch. Thank you for watching my review of the Addy's Dive Military Watch. Please like and subscribe. And I will be back next time with another watch review or hopefully an unboxing. I love unboxings. Bye.